Okay, I'm just going to talk about um, some of the things that I've added to my TV paint setup. This is just anyway, uh, just a collection of hacks. Anyway, uh, the first one is this hacked Wacom driver. And well, the first thing I want to talk about is a smoothing function that I've thrown in. Um, normally, Wacom tablets, especially Cintiqs, uh, when you're when you're operating the pen near the edge, they'll be kind of wobbly. You see, I'm not really, I'm not purposefully wobbling my line at all, but it will still be wobbly, you know, nonetheless. Um, the smoothing function, I can, oops, let me, yeah, I can turn on smoothing. Now, my smoothing function, if I hold the button I use for, for panning, it, you know, turns off smoothing, but when I release it, it begins smoothing again. So my smoothing function is a smart smoothing function. See, it's, it's, that's that's the smoothing it's doing right now, and when I really the other thing that the smoothing function does is it it smooths out um, tablet interpolation and it it smooths out any of the um, the pressure. So I can I can make very very gradual pressure increases and decreases. You know, so I can I can very very you know I can very gradually increase the pressure on the stylus and move it around. And I have multiple degrees of um, multi multiple degrees of smoothing. Now that's first degree. This is you know with one degree of smoothing, there's not a whole lot. You know, two degree. This is like with three degrees of smoothing. There's a ton of it. And the reason why this is kind of useful is like if you're zoomed out like crazy. Um, here I'll draw one spiral with smoothing off, and I'll turn smoothing on now, and I'll draw a spiral. Now when we zoom in, you're going to see the difference. That's without, and that's with. So, you know, I know most people won't be drawing up that that far. That's that's kind of an extreme situation, but yeah. So smoothing. Um, I also have a line constraint. Line constraint, I can, I got a foot pedal. I can just push the foot pedal down once, create the start position, hold it down. While it's held down, I can use this to create multiple lines. Um, pan the display to you know get get perpendicular lines. I can rotate it and keep using the same the same one. Um, when I release the foot pedal, then it will you know I just you know I'm not touching the foot pedal right now. It just allows the one. It, there's a free end. There's a locked end. So what the by releasing the pedal is it unlocks both ends. If I hold the pedal pedal down, then both ends are locked and it will stay that way for drawing parallel lines. Um, yeah, here, let me undo all that. Okay, the other thing I've made was, um, oh, if I ever create a line and I hold a button down, I got another button on my game controller. This allows me to create ellipses. So if I need to make a smaller ellipse, you know, for concentric. And notice that these ellipses can be tilted. Um. Yeah, and I have a I have a an ellipse guideline as well, you know that that makes this ellipse visible. Um, so that kind of useful thing. Uh, what else do I have? I have the um, modifications to the six D stylus. That would be this one. So the way it reads the stylus is a little different. Um, I now have a, a there's a toe and there's a heel to this stylus. So I have one brush which I've which I use specifically for the six D. And what this does is this allows me, if I use the flat edge, it's going to be flat like that. I've corrected the twist on the, on the Cintiq, so now it, it, it's properly aligned. Um, and then I can use the toe, so I can pull the toe of, this, of the stylus, or I can pull a heel. So I can do heel and toe, or I can, revol I can revolve it to change to heel and toe. So it's a little bit like bind, bind charcoal. The way I have this working, um, you know, again, my uh, if I turn on the smoothing engine, okay, so I've got maximum smoothing on. You'll find that there now. It's 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 a lot more laggy, but it's the um, the heel toe um, smoothing. It's it smooths out that reading as well. So you know, I don't just smooth out position. I also smooth out um, pressure, and you know, pretty much everything else. Um, moving on. There's the circle brush. Um, 
I have set up F1. I have mapped F1 to a foot pedal. So let me throw that window back up there. You know, this way I can choose the size of my brush independently from the pressure. So I can have high, you know, low to high pressure and a brush that gets smaller, you know, at the same time. So, you know, you probably wind up having to do a lot of remapping. Uh, in my case, I just have the foot pedal to dynamically change the size as I see fit. Um, also, another note about the smoothing is that the faster I move, the less smoothing it applies. So it's an automatic, it's a, this has, um, what do you call it? Uh, it's got an automatic transmission. So, you know, when you move fast, it gears down the smoothing. When you move slowly, it gears it up. So that's, that's the smoothing. Um, and this, and that's, that's the foot pedal control. All oh, right. Uh, I can also remap my, my Cintiq to the top monitor. So there's the top monitor up there. And if I need to access anything on the top monitor, I don't have to push any buttons on the Cintiq. I just hold a button down on my game controller and I can just grab a window, you know, and throw it back up there because, because, uh, um, TV Paint is is reading, you know, its coordinates off of the the tablet driver. I simply made it so while I'm holding the button down, it just you know remaps to the top monitor. Um, nice and simple. You know, if I start hitting it while I'm in the middle of drawing, you can see what it's doing. Is it's it's just jumping me from one monitor to the next. So I also have a little cursor that appears on screen. It's very hard to see right now with the um with the camera, but it's there. I assure you. It's uh, I don't know if you, yeah now yeah now you can see it. So that's what it looks like when I'm using the other monitor. So yeah, I have I can just hold the button down and it will jump me to the top monitor, release it, and it jumps me to the bottom monitor. Plain and simple. Um right, moving on. That, you know, like this kind of functionality is handy because um I can throw my palette onto the top monitor and just leave it there for now and then you know, if I need a new color, I can choose a color from up there, you know, grab another color from the palette, you know, and as you can see, my Cintiq has nothing. There is no, there's only the rooms on the bottom and like the thing on the top and that's it. There is, oh, by the way, could you make it so that I can full screen to just the Cintiq, you know, rather than uh, both displays? That'd be really nice. Um, yeah, it's like, you know, it's, it's I, I like having my whole Cintiq area for just drawing. Okay. Um, what else do I have set up? <coughs> um, Right, for the perceptual palette, um, P palette, I have an auto trimming function. So let me just rip that guy back down here. Sometimes, you know, you'll have sketches where, you know, your characters are, you know, they don't have the best line work in the world and they have opens openings to them. You know, this is something that happens a fair bit. And, you know, sometimes you just couldn't be arsed to go through and, you know, clean all that up. So I'm going to turn on my auto trim. And, you know, I'm going to start filling this guy. So I have to look at my brush settings. Okay, gap closers off, range 40. Let's set it to 24. Okay. And there. So I'm going to start filling this guy and being indiscriminate. And I'll just end the stroke here. And there. And now it what it does is it confines the stroke to, you know, one side of the line and the way this auto trim works is I can be painting wherever I want like this but it chooses the side that my mouse cursor is on there so I can paint be painting like this right and then as long as my mouse cursor winds up back here and I release the stylus it trims out the rest so this is the auto trim function that I use it's very handy for, you know, any kind of quick fill work. And what else? Oh, right. I have a lighten and darken mode. So I don't know. I've never tested this with the auto trim function. You know what? I don't really want to try it with the auto function on. Um, yeah, lighten mode and darken mode. So with lighten mode, um, you know, I can be using, here, let me add choose some, some different colors to throw down. So if I have yellow and black here, I can use the lighten mode to only lighten one of those two colors. And then darken mode, yeah, it's it, you pretty much get the idea. 
will only 